matter where you are. You are never out of his reach. No matter what the trial may be, God is able to see you through. Hello and welcome to Greater Glory. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries. And we're so glad that you're here to join with us today. We're going to be opening up today in the first chapter of Mark. We're going to be looking at verses 10 through 13. So we are going to lay it on a foundation for this message here. So we're going to be spending a few moments here. Come on. So the, the word says, and straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I, I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beast and the angels ministered unto him. We want to expound today on being in the midst of beasts when beasts are in the midst. Yes, hallelujah. So this message, it, it may hit home more for some than others. It will speak to those that are going through the fire, those that are in the valley battling at this present time, more than those that are on the mountaintop. You know, this message will be more important to those of us that have been trying to move forward and wanting to be effective in the things that God has called us to do in an atmosphere that seems adverse to the very thing that we're trying to get accomplished. Mm. And, and to have that dilemma, do I want, do I wait until the atmosphere Fear gets better, Ooh, or do we move forward in the midst of beasts? Hallelujah. We're talking about Ooh. ravenous, threatening spirits, flesh-eating, intimidating spirits, vipers with wagging tongues, beasts. Yes. Has anyone felt like they've been surrounded <laughs> by them? Come on. Then this message is for yes. you. You know somebody, maybe you, you just know somebody that's been going through this dilemma, that's been trying to figure out, should I wait until things get better, or should I just stand my ground and move forward and mm. go ahead? You may be just too, running, really running for God yeah. with all of your might, you know, minding your own business and God is moving in your life. And th we know that things are shifting in your favor, but then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. here comes that old beast, bringing an <laughs> attack on you, trying to stop you from fulfilling your assignment. Look, that wild beast could come up through just about anybody. Come on. You that's know? right. Look, you don't have to, you, 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 you can't really use your weapons mm -hmm. until you are in a fight. And you realize, we've got to realize that when we are born again, that's really when the fight begins. Amen. So there's going to be some wars of the spirit that are yeah. going to come along. Absolutely. And you can't even use what God has given you, your weapons, until you're in a fight. Amen. So pull out what God's given you. That's Amen. right. And remember, you're not in a fight with people. That's right. Your fight isn't in the flesh. You use spiritual authority and weapons of your warfare in, in the spirit to take down and take out the spirit that is driving the host, That's right. the person or the people. Come on, right? That's right. So right now, you better share this message with share. somebody today. Right now, hit your timelines, share it, share, share it, share, share. share it. Because you know somebody that's yes, going through this somebody dilemma right now. It. You're probably going through it. And uh, and you need to share it on your timeline. And help yes. get the gospel message. Amen. That the kingdom of heaven is here now. You know, in this passage, we find a, a very interesting time in the life of Jesus. And looking at this text, I, we just want to say that it's easier to preach mm -hmm. out of something that, you know, you identify with mm -hmm. personally. But before we talk about these scriptures, you know, being able to be applicable to us, let's look at how they're applicable to Christ, yes. how they apply to him, okay, in his life. You know, this is the really the first time that Jesus actually steps into the full mantle of his ministry. Yes, and that really hits home with every minister of the gospel, because every minister has a story of when God called them how God called them, and how God begins to call, to use you. But this should speak to everyone one way or another, because it's about how God wants to use you. 
That's right. This is not about preaching. This mm -hmm. is about purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's about when you finally come to the point when you begin to understand who you are and, and, and you step into that full mantle of what God has called you to do. Amen. It's a, it's a mile, milestone celebration, yeah. like a graduation mm -hmm. or a bar mitzvah uh, graduation or I mean, a bar mitzvah celebration, yes. you know, if you will. You're just as, as when Jesus was no longer 12. But he had come into that age of accountability. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is it 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 was his ministry was beginning. Yeah. It, it it is uh, relates to his ministry, and, and history tells us that he was thirty years old when he stepped into his ministry. That's right. And from the age of twelve to about thirty, we we know very little about Jesus's life, and there was not much said about those eighteen years. Those years were not recorded because his time had not come yet. That's right. Right. And, you know, you think about that with a lot of folks. We, you know, you're wondering, mm -hmm. I know God's called me yeah. and I know God has gifted me mm -hmm. and the power of God is in my life. Mm -hmm. And there's an anointing and the revelation is coming. Yes. But yet there is a there's years sometimes yes. that no one understands what God is doing with come you. On, they they right. you're just hidden away. Yes. But it's because your time has not come. come and on. Jesus even went through it for 18 years. That's right. He, he knew that he had a purpose. Yeah. A great purpose for his life. Amen. 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 But he had to step into it. That's right. And and you may be in that time right now, spiritually speaking. That's right. You know, at, at 30, Jesus appears on the scene in a crowd that was gathered unto John the Baptist. And, you know, John the Baptist was a prophet that was in the wilderness eating locusts and honey and, and dressed in camel's hair. You know, and then Jesus shows up as one of the crowd and John points him out in the crowd. Come on, y'all know the story here. And there, there's so much there, but we're looking at the end of Jesus's baptism that took place that day for what, what occurs here in the Jordan. And it is at the end of the story where this roller coaster ride of, of, of a road begins. And, and life is like that, isn't it? Yes. A roller coaster ride. Amen. Yeah. It's funny how you, you really enjoy them when you're younger. You know, when, when you when you hit about forty five to fifty, they are not as enjoyable as they mm, used to be. It's it's all right going up, yeah. you know, it, and everything's pretty calm going up. You I mean you hear that chain cranking yeah. and you're going on along the way, mm. and 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 when you get up top. The view is beautiful yeah. and, and everything is really good up there. Yeah. And, and uh, if you could just stay right there, right. you know, yeah, at that top, it's just fine. It's good. It's that down part that it's not so good. Mm. You know, it's not a good time to have your head snapping all over the place <laughs> and, and you're completely out of control at that point. That of your life yeah. and getting older it's not an, as enjoyable yeah you know and some of you may understand that and you're saying yeah, yeah i'm keeping my feet on the ground come on you know because it can make you frustrated amen you, you, you may want to say things to the operator that you know isn't quite christ-like or your prayer life might even go down to zero at that moment you might have to even go mm. home and pray about come the on. thoughts of, <laughs> and you know the actions that you wanted to take because of the experience that you were going through yes you know the lord said lo i'm all <laughs> with you always you know amen we can we, we can say i mean he's with us high and low but low yeah. and keep you sometimes it's better keep your feet on the ground amen and uh and, and stay low and humble yeah. amen yeah. you know our, our daughter talked me into going on a roller coaster oh, called yes. tempesto. tempesto come on <laughs> of all yes. the names Tem temptation Tem 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 tempesto <laughs> That's and right. it's a vertical loop rope coaster that goes forward and backward and corkscrew screws and and it propels you uh faster each time that you go down through the starting point that docking station That's right in both directions and you don't know if you're coming or you or you're going you're being jet propelled either for both ways yeah i told him not to get on that thing <laughs> but you know what no, matter of fact i actually jumped off of a ride that yeah. our daughter tried to get me on that, mm -hmm. that particular day and said no look i know i'm with you for better or for worse or richer or for poor <laughs> but i wasn't i wasn't getting on that ride i'm gonna right. my feet on the ground <laughs> you know bill came off of that ride and said i'm not going that again no you, know, I, you can I have did. it you I, can I, have I said, it i'll never get on that thing again <laughs> you couldn't pay me to get on that ride no way that's right you know because there's something about going up and down 
And as you're going round and round, as soon as you get up, you go down and down and then it whips you back up again. Are you hearing me? Yes. For, for, for first you're going forward and, and then you're going backward and, and then forward again. And, you know, that's the way life is. That's the way life is. It, it's peaks and it's valleys and, and it's highs and it's lows and good times and bad times and moving fast and, and moving slow. That's right. And all the while you're going around and around. And the music plays. And the music continues to play. <laughs> right? And, yeah. And, and whatever happens, once you've strapped yourself in, you've just got to deal with mm, it. Come on. Come on. If we stop right there, we've preached to you today. That's it. See Life is like time. a roller coaster. <laughs> and whatever yeah. comes, you're going to have to strap. You've already strapped yourself in. You've yep. already paid the money. You've mm. already got your ticket. And you don't get to to say, to, you know, how it's going to go. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You got to deal with it. Yeah. You can't get off the ride and just because you don't like the tempo. That's right. You cannot stop in the middle of the ride. And you can't, you know, you have to ride it all the way through. Amen. That's right. You know, and life is like that. You don't get to control it. And, uh, and sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down mm. and sometimes it's level to the ground. Yeah. You know, you, you know what we're saying here. Yeah. You know, in, in this group of people that we're, we're speaking to right now and, and then all over the world as this message goes out, there is somebody that's up mm -hmm. and there's somebody that's down. There's somebody that's going up the hill and they're excited mm. and they're making all kinds of plans and they're sharing their dreams with, with everyone that will listen to them. And right now there is someone that's flying downhill as fast as it can and their cheeks are all flapping back and they're screaming because they don't know what's going to happen to them. Yeah. And they're probably on their face before God saying life is terrible, but we want to say, hold on, hold on and wait. Long enough. Come on. Things are going to shift. Things will shift again. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Everybody has good days and everybody has bad days. And that is why we shake our heads at people who point their fingers at others while they suffer because we understand you're next. You're, yeah, you're next. Mm. So you don't, Come on. don't do it. Don't do, Don't it. do it. You got to learn to uh, to be busy about our Father's business. Amen. Stay focused on what God has put in your hands to do, yeah. and stay in your lane. Ooh. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. That's and good. so, so what an amazing time for Jesus this was. Yeah. You know, in in one day he goes from no one knowing who he is to notoriety in yeah. the crowd. Mm -hmm. As you know, as he was baptized in the Jordan River, he comes up out of the water, and the King James states that the heavens opened up. Come on, Amen. And the Amplified Bible it states that the heavens were torn apart, mm. torn open, torn open. Come on, that the Father ripped the heavens open to speak for His Son. That's right. Woo, hallelujah! What a moment. You know, now any time the Father speaks to you, that it, it's an incredible feeling. But to have God the Father rip open the heavens that's right. and yell down, that's my boy. Amen. That's my son. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Now, that is amazing. That's a moment. Yes. And 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 there he comes up and, and this and the sun comes up out of the water and the father speaks down from heaven, mm. tearing open the heavens to affirm his authenticity, yeah. that he is a legitimate son, mm. saying, That is my son, that's my son, who oh, I'm well pleased. And as gently as the summer breeze, mm. the Holy Spirit, as gentle as butterfly fluttered wings, mm. the comforter, the Holy Spirit, descends on him like a dove and lights upon Ooh, him. Come on. It's a glorious yeah. moment. And, and he's got water beads dripping off of him, you know, off his mm. hair, off his off his face, and his clothes are saturated with water. And before he moves to dry himself, the full vesture of the Godhead yeah. has endorsed the authenticity of who he is. Hallelujah. It is the, the one, if not the only time in the New Testament that you will see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit appear it at once in an audible and a visual way at the same moment. Mm -hmm. And the, and they are, are here together 
to authenticate yeah, Jesus yeah. as the son of God Come on. and the Holy Spirit gently appeared upon him so that the people would be witnesses mm. to that, to the, the Christos is upon him, yeah. up, you know, up until that moment, he was called Jesus, yes. but afterward he was called Jesus Christ. Come on. And the next name changing moment that came was at his resurrection where the, the the name Lord was yes. added before his name, added to him. And, and you know, he, he received a better name than all that is in the heaven or the earth. Come on. And that better name that we pray in is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4 says, Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christos, meaning anointing. Christ means anointed one. It was a name-changing moment for him right there in the Jordan. And what makes a moment better? It's witnesses. It's witnesses. Come on. This is how God shows his love for us. Yeah. Well, let's talk about an example Ooh. between husband and wife. Yeah. Supporting situation. Come on. You know, just maybe, maybe uh, you men out there want to, to give your wife some flowers to make her day special. But you don't give flowers all, all too often because you're not getting the reaction that you're you're wanting to get. <laughs> well, maybe it's because you're not doing it right. Come on. You know, you say, oh, what do you mean? I buy, you know, two or three bunches of flowers for her. What do you mean I'm not doing it right? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is you should be giving them to her in front of people. Unexpectedly. Ooh, it's, unexpectedly. Yes. Hallelujah. Because what? It's all about location, location, location. Location. <laughs> Moments are better with witnesses. Yeah. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Your man shows up at the office with flowers. And after after the ladies see that him walking in with those flowers and mm -hmm. giving them to you, they go, girl, yeah. you got that man loving on you. On, Look you at the flowers. <laughs> you know, men don't get it. It's mm. not the flowers. Mm. It's how it wrecks the other ones. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right. It's it's you it's every moment mm -hmm. is celebrated better with witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. It's that validation and that public proclamation mm -hmm. of his love. Come, Come on. on. Yeah. And, and there is nothing better than being validated by the Lord in front of witnesses. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. It's sweet as honey. Yeah. In front of a crowd is how God shuts the mouth of people that are talking about you behind your back. That's right. And he expresses what he is saying about you. Come on, Matthew Hallelujah. 6, 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Reward. See, yeah. that, that is God rewarding you Come when on. he validates you in front of others. He's rewarding what he sees all that you're doing in secret. Mm -hmm. That no one knows what you're doing, but yeah. he sees it all. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, Jesus in the Jordan got the validation of the Father and the Holy Spirit in the midst of a crowd mm. that thought he was just a regular guy. I just thought he was a regular right? guy. Come on. There's nothing like God standing up for you validating you saying i got you in front of everybody that's right hallelujah hallelujah and this is a high moment in jesus's life that's right this is a, this is an open affirmation for the father to give his validation in a crowd mm -hmm. and before he could enjoy it he finds himself being transitioned <laughs> In, in just like in a transitioning moment from being validated by the Father and the Holy Spirit that descended on him like a dove to the word states that the Holy Spirit drove him mm. in the wilderness, wow. drove him to the wilderness. Mm. You know, how is it that a comforting spirit, that the Holy Spirit, you know, the same spirit that, that comes up in such sweet comfort drives you to be tested? Come on, drive or driven is not a desirable word. We don't like to be pushed or shoved, right? But the Bible says that the spirit drove him in the wilderness. It implies that there was some resistance That's there, right? right? So I wouldn't have to drive you if you were going on your own. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It implies that there was some resistance 
And before he could enjoy the splendor of this moment, the same spirit, the comforting spirit that came like a dove now has a whip. He's got a whip now. Come on, driving him. And he did not want to go into that wilderness. Life is like that. Yeah. You know, it's highs and lows, ups and downs, happy and horrific. Mm. And you don't really know what the next day is going to bring. You don't really know what the next text is going to bring. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what the next phone call is going to bring. Come on. Have you ever been afraid to even answer the telephone? Yeah, come on. You know, he was driven to the wilderness where the temptation occurred. And, you know, that he could say that he had been where it was dry and parched, barren and desert, miles and miles of parched, dry, scorching sand. And the same spirit that blessed him pushed him into a dark place of isolation to be tempted of the devil. Come on. We see all the people led to preach. They're led to, they feel led to preach. Led to pastor. Led to pastor. Led to take the lead. Mm -hmm. Led to build. You know, led to buy, led to speak, and led to prophesy. That's right. But where, I wonder, are the people today led to suffer? Come on, I don't hear anyone saying, I feel led to suffer so the Spirit of the Lord can prove you. That's right. Come on, the first five years of our ministry, we were called to the highways and the byways. We worked all week and ministered all weekend. There was no break. No, for we eight months it. out of the year. But you know, we didn't need it. The Holy Spirit really just strengthened us. Absolutely. He? he did. And it was such an anointing. When we look back on it now, we There's go, no physical way wow. we could have done what we did on our own. Without it was only the Holy by Spirit. the grace of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and that was eight this. months out of the year. Yeah, eight months out of the year. For five years, we did this. Straight. And we were in a, a different city just about every weekend. That's right. And all the while, physically hauling all of our audio and visual uh, equipment. Everything. Setting up a full-blown event, church, whatever we were doing. That's right. And it was 90 or 100 degrees in, in the heat. In the middle of summer. Come on. It, was, it yeah. was really hot. And we were happily doing it because we were under the anointing of God. That's right. You know, and, and we held Christian worship nights and, and kid services and Sunday morning revival services outdoors. And we did baptisms <laughs> in the sounds and in the lakes and in the pools or at the beach, wherever there was water. And, you know, in those sounds, there were snakes, but the no, Lord we kept didn't them even away think from about us. It. Amen. We kept didn't think about anything because, you know what, we when we you're under the anointing, the anointing of God, nothing can come against you. That's right. Amen. When you're doing the work you don't have to Lord. worry about the wild beasts. No, the wild beasts were put asunder. That's right. Come on hallelujah hallelujah and most of the time there was no one to help us mm -hmm. at the 6 a.m setups for services no, there was come nobody. on there was very few that came out uh with with, with us to, with the services and and fewer would stick around at the end to help break down that's true you know yeah. what i mean yeah. and and you know we, we had a couple of family members from time to time that would come out and 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 be with us and a, a few close friends and it was just us most of the time. That's right. With the angels and the and the spirit of the Lord and, yeah, and yeah. most of these this time that we're talking about. Yet many were invited to come help. We invited many. Many. Many, many. To put their hands to the plow. But no, they were called to their, their mm. air conditioner services and their cushion seats. They didn't mm. feel led Come to on. suffer. Many are called to action, but but then few are chosen. You know, no, they they weren't they didn't feel led to suffer. No, <laughs> no, no. You know, Christ was driven into the desert to be tempted of the enemy. And the Bible states that he was there in the wilderness alone, under attack mm. with the enemy for 40 days, and he fasted. And it is true that the enemy tempted in the fast. Yes. But don't think that the fast is the temptation here. That's right. The fast is not the temptation. It is the prep for the temptation. That's right. Fasting is the, the prepping of the soul. Yeah. And our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. You know, so it's it's the fasting is prepping of our mind, will, and emotions for the temptation. Yes, yes. You know, it, it is also during the fast that you're able to break the power of unbelief. Amen. You know, to stand firmly on the word of God that, that you know, God has spoken to you. You know, the reason that we are going through so much that we're going through in the church is, is you know, that we are doing a great job at all the showy stuff in the mm. church, but for such a poor job uh, of personal consecration mm. and in a committed life Ooh. and 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 we we are up for all the high things but when the spirit pushes us to go into a fast we don't fast mm. 
you know, in the in the battles are lost because of the preparation of, of our flesh is not being done. Come on. You know, time spent in, in preparation is never time wasted. No. You know, you cannot have great a great recital if you don't if you have poor rehearsals. That's right. And people that don't want to rehearse can never perform well in the recital. Mm. Well, so that's the same thing with pre- preparing your flesh, yeah. preparing your spirit. Prepare, pre- preparation is never a wasted time. No. We we have all kinds of people in church that want to do all the showy stuff and you know they show up for the recital, but for the rehearsal they are not there or they 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 show up when it's convenient. That's right. Or they, they get on the prayer call when it's convenient. Yeah. You know, it, these on. are things that we've got to learn to discipline ourselves. That's, that's right. You know, if, if you don't have something shiny or new or, uh, or you know, some flashy evangelist that's coming through or or whatever, you, you they, where you've got to pull from your own gut or out of your own consecration or out of your own inspiration, Come on. these types of people just say, no, yeah. uh-uh, no. So, so what are they really saying with their no? Mm. It, it's, it's this, don't put me in a dry service where I have to do something for myself. Mm. Ooh, come on. Put me in a place where someone else has done all the praying and, and all the fasting and I'll come eat. Come, come on. on. But, but I'm not cooking. And and I'm not washing the dishes or cleaning up, but I will come and eat. See, fasting is the time spent in preparation because fasting prepares our soul, our mind, will, and emotions for denial. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is an announcement to our body that is saying, no matter how you send me urges, I will not respond. Mm-hmm. Body, this is a dress rehearsal that you're not in charge. Yes. You know, and I can, you know, I can feel those cravings mm-hmm. and, and resist the response. Mm-hmm. And this is the rehearsal. And this is this is not a temptation. This is the preparation for the temptation, so that when I get in the throes of temptation, mm-hmm. I already have trained myself. Yes. you know that that just because you're hearing the, the your flesh knocking, just it doesn't mean that your flesh can have whatever it wants. Come on, you know I'm talking foreign stuff to a lot of people in the younger generation. Yeah. That, you know, they they say that's that old stuff that nobody does anymore. Mm-hmm. If, if I if I preached it about thirty years ago, that there, the church would have been you know yelling out <laughs> "Amen" and "Hallelujah," "Hallelujah," come on, "Amen." Come on! But now, if you don't preach uh, about praise and, and worship and and feel good messages. People don't know how to handle it. Those that are in this hyper grace movement, (laughs) they don't know how to handle it. You know, we're good at the coming out part, but when we have to go into something, we're failing because there is a lack of character to withstand the attack of temptation. You've got to have moral conduct Mm. and and a godly character. You better believe it. And you've got to be able to know how to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And tell your flesh no. Put your flesh under the Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit's will. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we, we think, Think, we think that God, you know, people think that God is is uh, not delivering them. They think, oh, well, God's not delivering us. And, um, you know, people you know, want, want uh, him to deliver them of temptation. But if God delivers you from temptation, how it then is it temptation? Come on. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, here hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. You can pray for God to not lead you to temptation, and, and, but to deliver you from evil. But, but if God delivers you from temptation, then it's not temptation. Mm-hmm. If you ask the Lord, Lord, deliver me from, the, from sweets. Now, if he delivers you from sweets, either he removes the sweets or takes your or you know from your from your area where you can you can reach them, mm-hmm. or he takes the desire for those sweets away. Mm-hmm. But either way, you cease to be tempted because it is is not there for you, or you just don't want it anymore. Come on. So I'm getting to something here. So you got to wait for it because. Some of you have have had your whole life on hold because you've been waiting on God to deliver you of some type of sin, which you may have minimized down to and called just called a bad habit. Mm. It's still sin. 
you know, but, but, you know, they are their cravings and their, and their temptations, their lusts of the flesh of all types. And you're, and you're waiting and you're waiting on God to deliver you because you think whatever the flesh wants, the flesh ought to get. Mm -hmm. And so much so that you may say, well, if, if you still want it, then it's a sign that you're not delivered. Or maybe you're not supposed to be delivered. Come maybe on. you're just born this way and, and then you've got a right to have it. Ooh, because, Come on. Right? Because you're so used to getting whatever you want in your mind. The fact that you want it means you ought to get it because you have never been denied anything at any time. Come, Come on. on. Right? Mama let you do whatever you wanted to do whenever you wanted to do it. You know, flesh gets whatever it wants to get. And now you expect God to give you whatever your flesh wants, like mama does. But God is not your mama. God is not your mama. Right? Come on. This world has produced a whole generation of people that are flesh driven with entitlement issues because they have gotten whatever they have wanted. We have raised a generation where self-denial is a foreign thing. That's right, because you're giving your kids, even your grown kids, whatever they want. And, and now here, here we're approaching the day of temptation with no prep, mm. no prep for our Come physical, on. no prep for our souls to deny the flesh, to resist the real fights of faith in our, in, in our lives and their lives. The Antichrist agenda. Mm. What's going to happen when they say, okay, now you've got to take the mark of the beast, or you're not going to have all of these things that satisfy your flesh. That's right. If you had no prep to be mm. able to deny your flesh, are you going to sell your soul to the devil for the for the satisfying of the flesh because you've never at any time denied your flesh? Come on. This wow. is what we're this is how important it is. Yeah. We've got to learn how to fast and pray and deny our flesh and put our flesh under Holy Spirit's will. And we've got to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get the body of Christ in a place where we are prepping. We're, we are prepping. We are prepping and yeah. we are ready yeah. to fight the good fight of faith to the death. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, are you hearing me in this? <laughs> the the fast is not a is is not a fight of faith. It is the prep for the fight. Come on. And and so what many don't understand is the difference between self-denial and deliverance. They go, oh, deliver me from evil. But but temptation, you know, they, they think temptation mm -hmm. is the evil, mm -hmm. right? But see, we, we want to say, Lord, do deliver me from the evil. But realize that the temptation I've got to face mm -hmm. and I've got to learn how to feel the pain of the craving, the pain of the humility and the lust and the detox and the shakes or whatever it's going to take for you to put your flesh under and just say no to your flesh. Yeah. You know, it, it's time, it's past time for all of us to come into the full maturity of the faith and to learn how to put our flesh under Holy Spirit's will. Come on. You know, who is, is this speaking to today? I know it's speaking to a lot of you. And, you know, you got to tell yourself that Nancy Reagan was right in saying, just say no. Just say Come on, no. all you older people know who Nancy Reagan is. That's right. <laughs> and you probably even heard her say it. Amen. You might say, preacher, that's too hard to do. I keep messing up. I, I keep trying. And, yes, we know it. But the problem is most people are not even trying, thinking that they're not messing up. And they just stay in their mess because it's our right to have it. Come on. Right? That's right. This is born out of the desire to want it. And whatever we want, we get. That's right. Mm. So as long as you get whatever you want, you can't have temptation. You can't, you can, you can have indulgence and pray for deliverance, but God will never deliver you from temptation. And, and it, because it, it's still, it, it, it is still temptation. Right. He, he wants to, to test you. He's going to test you with the temptation. Yeah. And, you know, you've got to learn how to deny yourself. Amen. Matthew 16, 24 says, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Oh, Lord, don't Ooh. let us, any of us lose it right here. Let, let everyone get this point right here. Amen. You know, it used to be that a lot of people would come up to the altar asking for the Lord to help 
Um, and they, they would, they would ask the Lord, help me be better at denying myself so that, so that we can win the fight. They understood that they had to put their flesh under. And now so many prayers are for satisfying the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 I want, I want, I want. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So let's talk about another D word called discipline. Mm -hmm. Jesus has, was driven out in the desert to learn self-denial and discipline. Self-denial produces discipline. Yeah. So, so that when the enemy began to attack him, his flesh had, had some type of reference point for suffering. Mm. And, and he was not as vulnerable as he would have been if he had not fasted 40 days. Come on. Now, the Bible states at the end of 40 days, Satan begins to tempt him. And there is a difference between natural craving and Satan's temptation. He was already hungry. That was a natural fact. But he was also in an extreme environment. The conditions were extreme mm. and, and not conducive to his survival. That's right. Right? So extremely hot during the day, 100 plus degrees during the day, hot sand under his feet. And then it was extremely cold during the night. Yes. It got down to 25 degrees at night. So the fact that he survived out there alone and hungry is amazing and was only because of the grace of the Father. That's right. Come on, apply that to your life right now. We got to apply it to our lives. So some of you feel like if the thing that didn't kill you uh, and, and, you know, if one thing didn't kill you, the other thing should have. And, and by, it was only by the, ace, the grace of God that you're even here. Yeah. I, I know that there are situations that I've been through where the enemy has tried to take me out several times in my life. And it's only by the grace of God that I'm here. Yes. You know, and, and the cold that you went through at night and your loneliness should have destroyed mm. your you out of a broken heart. And the heat of the mess that you went through during the day should have drove you crazy for a nervous breakdown. And, um, and just taking you out. Mm. And on top of that, you were hungry too. Ooh, you were on. in financial difficulties. You didn't even know how you were going to put food on the table and keep the lights on. And um, it was only by the grace of God that you're still here. Yeah. But before you could celebrate the survival of coming through different things that God's taking you this, this, here comes another attack. Yeah. It is, <laughs> come on. Is there anyone that this is witnessing to right now? That has come through the fire of one trial. And before you can celebrate your survival, here comes the next thing. That's right. And your environment is against your survival on top of it. Come on. Is anyone going through this today? Comment and tell has, us about it. We're yes. pray for you. Yes. Has anyone been through this wilderness that we're talking about? Some people may say, oh, if I had only been born in a different family, had different opportunities in life, I would have ended out better. Or maybe, oh, you know, if I only had better parents that were more involved or more attentive to me, uh, that weren't absent or, or didn't leave me, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, or or maybe you, you're one that, that says, oh, if I only was born into a better financial uh, situation mm -hmm. where I had the ability and the guidance in my younger years for higher education I would have turned out better. Things would have been easier for, for me. Right. But, you know, all that was not God's plan for your life. That's right. Your struggles have helped to make you the strong person in faith that you are today. Yes. Now, Jesus, he's in the wilderness and he's fasting for 40 days, burning up during the day and freezing during the night. Mm. And when you think about this wilderness time, it was the Holy Spirit who drove him to the wilderness. And now God isn't saying anything. He's not saying anything. And the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And they drove him into the wilderness to prove him and that for him to be tested. And, you know, we got to remember that when the teacher gives an exam, you, you can ask all you want for help and for these, you know, to get the right answers, to get direction, right? Mm -hmm. But they're not going to say anything. So what do you do <laughs> when, when before you can come out of this, here comes that and God isn't saying anything to you. What do you do when all chaos is breaking out and the devil is tempting you on every side and you've got fear that's coming from the enemy that to just to throw in the towel on your faith and God isn't saying nothing. 
What do you do when you are dealing with so many things at one time and you can't even think clearly to get a clear direction and which way to go and God is saying nothing? Mm. Well, I'm going to tell you what you do. We're going to tell you what you do. You are to word up. You've got to word up. You need to be uh, logging on every day, taking in another message here with this ministry. You need to be searching the word. You need to be hearing the word because hearing brings faith. You'll hear by the word. You bring your faith increases, mm-hmm, amen. Mm-hmm. And you know, you got to take in the message and 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 uh you know, we're always posting, we're always posting. There's there's over a hundred messages archived that you can get in to feed your spirit yes, every on. day, you know, and get in your word and read the word, you know, because he's not supposed to answer during this time. Mm. Realize that it is a season of wilderness for you, and you are being proved and tested in your faith to move into another level Ooh. another dimension of his glory come on this is a season to realize that you need to be in these meetings here in the word and you need to be in your word like never before like never before it's the word the word the word it's the word that will that you will need to use against the enemy that's right come on when he comes to tempt you to fear and to give up it's the word that Jesus used, and it's the word that we use against the enemy. That's right. Come See, on. That revealed word, as yes. the Holy Ghost does, reveal it to you. Come on. And what he's revealed things to you in times past that you've got to pull up out of your spirit. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You gotta you gotta do what you what you've been taught to do. Mm-hmm. It's time to use the weapons of your warfare. Come on. This is the season that we've been trying to prepare you for. Because if you if you Get enough word in you when God isn't saying anything, Mm. you can refer back to the word that he's already revealed to you, that rhema word, Mm. and war with the rhema word that God has already given to you in prayer and do what you've been taught to do. Amen. God says, I'm not going to say anything else to you until you learn how to live out what I've already Mm. told you. And I'm not going to say another word. You're going to have to reach down into your spirit and pull out what I have said and obey me. Hmm. Have faith in me, what I have said to you, that I have you. And fear not in that situation that I'm telling you to come out of. Hmm. I told you when you pass through the water, I'd be with you. That when you go through the fire, I be with you. And when the when you are in the flood, I said I am there. Don't ask me to show up. You got to have faith that I'm already there. You got to believe that I'm always with you. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even if He doesn't say anything, He is with you. Come on. Things may get worse before they get better, but He's with you. You may be crying all night, but he's with you. Yes. Come on. He wouldn't have drove you into it if he wasn't going to pull you out of it. Come on. Come on. Trust him and take him at his word. Though he slay me, yet I will worship him. Yes. Come on. I will praise his name forever. If he doesn't say anything else, I'm going to praise his name anyway. If he doesn't do anything else, I'm going to praise his name Come anyway. On. If he doesn't rip open the heavens, I'm going to praise him anyway. Because yeah. I, all I have to do is remember what he's already done for me. Amen. 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 What Hallelujah. he's already done for you. Yes. So let one more time, let's go back and look at that verse again. Mark 1, 13 says, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him in the midst of beasts we want to remind you that you have promises in the word of god concerning the wild beasts (laughs) come on you know god says he's given us power that's right over the powers of darkness yes to trample over them come on amen yes Hallelujah. hallelujah we have authority given to us in his name Amen. To come against the spirits that yes. drive. That's right. Amen? Yes. But Jesus also gave us gave us promises here that we want to stand on as well. Jesus Christ not only became master over uh, all of us, but he became master over Satan. Yeah. He became master over the demons and over all their works. And 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 but he also became master 
over the animals. Yes. And he had immunity from their poisons. Come on. All this was promised to us as believers that, as well. That's right. Amen. You know, Mark 16, verses 17 and 18 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on. Yes. Luke ten nineteen says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents on. and scorpions. Yes. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. There's power in Come the blood on. of Jesus. Hallelujah. And there's power in the name of the Ooh, Lord Jesus. You Christ. better believe it. Hallelujah. Come on. Psalms 91, 1 through 11. I know you know it, but we're going to say it right now. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. Yes. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings mm -hmm. shalt thou trust. Yes. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Come on. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Stand For on. he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Hallelujah. Ooh. So prophetically speaking as well, we have been given authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. In Mark 1.13, it went on to say that while he was there with the wild beasts, and being tempted of Satan, the angels ministered unto him. Mm. And the Lord never leaves us. He doesn't leave us helpless. No. Even when we're being proved in the wilderness. Come on. The, the angels, angels are coming. Yes, the angels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are already here to help. When you're in the wilderness, they are there to minister to you. That's right. The Lord does not leave us helpless, even during our testings. You're not alone today. Never alone. You you serve the God who sees. You serve the God who hears. Mm. And you serve a God that speaks. Hallelujah. So hold on. The situation you're going through will come to pass. Be encouraged in the Lord by renewing your mind with the washing of the word. Amen. You'll find comfort in the answers that you seek right in God's word. Yes. And as you wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength and he, he will cause you to mount up on eagle's wings and you will run and not grow weary. Come on. If this message is for you, share your comments with us, please. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from and you. And we want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's seal this in prayer today. Yes, hallelujah. Lord Father, we just bless you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for every viewer from all over the world, Lord God. We thank you for our viewers in Pakistan. We thank you for our viewers in India. We thank you for our viewers in Afghanistan. We thank you, Lord God, for our viewers in America. We thank you for the Philippines, Lord God, and, and uh, the UK, Lord God, and Australia and Africa. Mm. We thank you for our viewers, our brothers and sisters from Africa. Lord Father, we ask you to bless Bless them yes. abundantly, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Yes, Lord God, God, we thank you right now that you are strengthening them yes. and their spirit to help them, Lord Father, to learn how to put their flesh under yes. and to prep, Lord God, their soul for the temptations of the enemy, that yes, they will God. be able to fight the good fight of faith. Lord Father, we bless you. We thank you for them. We ask, Lord God, that your provision would run ahead of them and that you would bring forth deep revelation of your word and that you would open up your word word to them today, Lord God, and show them and reveal them, Lord God, the deeper things of who you are and who you created them to be, what their purpose is, Lord God, in this life. We bless you. We yes. ask you to bless them, Lord Father, and we thank you for it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Well, we really are, are happy that you have come today and joined us for this broadcast. And we encourage you to get connected with us at HightowerMinistry.org. Yes, if you go on to HightowerMinistry.org and register on our website, you'll get a, you'll receive a, a, a free download that Amen. will really bless you. And uh, we want to encourage you to also look us up on YouTube and uh, subscribe and hit that bell so that you don't miss a message. We're, we're posting out on YouTube three times a week. That's right. We also have a Charisma podcast going out on Charisma charisma media network and so you can uh, find us wherever you listen to your podcast whether it's spotify apple i or um itunes mm -hmm. uh, or wherever. audible mm -hmm. and wherever you listen to your your podcast uh look up High Tower Ministries podcast. We've got a wonderful archive of messages that you can be encouraged all through your week. Amen. And follow us on Facebook. Yes. Follow us at High Tower Ministries International. And uh, you, will, you will be encouraged there. We have all kinds of words of encouragement. And also we have a Testimony Tuesday broadcast that's live on Facebook every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please come on and join us for that. We have some wonderful prophets and speakers that come on and we interview them on their prophetic books. And, and they also help us to pray. And the Lord moves through those broadcasts. And we pray live for all of our viewers. So please get connected every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I know that on the other side of the world, I think that goes into your Wednesday morning. Yeah. But uh, but just set your clock and, and uh, spend some time with us. Share High Tower Ministries International with your friends and yes. your family. Help to preach the gospel Amen. by sharing and, and caring. Amen. Amen. And if you haven't gotten your copy of Unlocking Glory, we encourage you to go to HightowerMinistry.org and get your copy today. You will be blessed Amen. Truly. Amen. It's 24 chapters of the deep meat teaching of the word of God. It's going to take you through the principles of your faith all the way through the perfections. And what I mean by that is it's really kind of your A to Z yes. of Christianity. It's going to help you to understand how to hear God and how to flow with the Holy Spirit, how the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate through you and recognize when God is using you, you don't want to miss a lock in glory. It will be a great spiritual tool for your toolbox. Amen. We also, they took two years to write that one. It's a lifetime of learning and the revelation that God packed into this book is incredible. Uh, and then there was another year after that was published for the study guide. Now we have the study guide for Unlocking Glory. We're so happy to announce that we have this. And uh, what an incredible tool to use together. Uh, it'll help with your self-reflection, help you to pinpoint where you are yes. on the yielding process to the Lord and how you are moving and, and where you need to grow, areas that you need to grow. You will learn so much. So we encourage you to get both your copies yes. you can do that by going to our website at hightowerministry.org and and i'll be glad to sign a copy for you and get them out free shipping if you're living in the united states but if you live outside of the united states we encourage you to go to amazon or barnes and nobles uh no barnes and noble because mm -hmm. uh they they give you free shipping so that that is the information that we wanted to share Amen. with you and we hope that you come back and, and spend more time with us at high tower ministries international and until then be blessed. Be blessed.